So when you get a hateful comment online, messages, email reply, even a phone call, you need to be able to measure what it is. Objection, complaint, or troll. And you have to come back with something. It's kind of like when your spouse says, do you think that I, whatever, fill in the blank, do you think that I dress sloppy? Do you think that I'm just lazy? Do you think I'm a bad cook? Do you think I'm a bad spouse? You need to respond. And if you take too long to respond, you're in even more trouble no matter what you say, right? It's kind of like that. Responding to hateful comments, if you don't respond, it makes you look guilty and it makes the comment seem true. And if you hide it, you're really losing the opportunity to speak truth to an objection, to build a relationship through a complaint. So you have to say, you should say something. Unless it's a troll, we'll talk about that in a second. But you should say something. And you should say something ideally within 24 hours. Okay? We understand social media, all the different kind of avenues we have of communication. Most of them, besides the phone call and sometimes text, are asynchronous. Meaning they don't take place at the same time. So if someone leaves a hateful comment... You, it's okay if you don't reply to it at 3 a.m. That's what I'm saying, okay? And you don't have to respond right away either. Like, if you are on your computer and you see a Facebook notification, you click on it, and it's a hateful comment that was left five minutes ago, you don't have 60 seconds to reply. You can take a step back, measure what kind of comment it was, and then develop your reply and kind of run through, make sure this sounds okay. So how do we respond to the different types of comments? Number one kind of comment you have is an objection. Okay, this is again a disagreement with what you say. So this is something against what you believe or how you do things. It, it, it has to do with almost the theology, doxology, or methodology of how we do church. And the best thing to do that is to speak truth to it in an understandable way. You're not writing a thesis, you're not writing a doctorate, you're not writing a blog that's for other pastors. You're speaking to someone who is so incredibly lost and needs some truth. And so the best way to handle an objection, again, something that's a disagreement with what you say. Young Earth creationism, creationism is a crock. Or gap theory is false and wrong. Um, there, uh, group, small groups is, is heretical. Large churches are heretical. The Bible said nothing about abortion. Jesus said nothing about that. You're misinterpreting what homosexuality is, right? All of these are objections because they're disagreeing with what you're saying, with your teaching or what you're believing. And so you need to speak truth to it. And believe it or not, the Bible and verses are not always the best answer, right? Sometimes the worst thing you can do is try to eisegese your way out of this. And I think we try to be exegetical in everything that we do, but when we pull verses out to make a point against a hater, we're almost doing the same thing that they try to do. And they try to misuse verses out of context to prove their point. So if you even, mis even use a verse in context, they're going to think that you're just trying to do whatever you can to make the Bible say what you think it's going to say. Using a Bible verse in this scenario is not always recommended. It's not always going to bring your point across. What you have to do is come down, not come down to their level, but just above it and say, hey, we hear you, we understand, and there is a lot of information about there, out there about evolution, about abortion, about when life starts, uh, about you know where God came from, whatever it is they're disagreeing with you about. You can, you can, you can also use something like, I feel I found, felt I found, or I feel I found I felt, right? That's the whole thing, feel found felt. I think that's what it was. Uh, hey, we used to feel the same way. I used, to, I, used to, I used to think the same way. After I dug into archaeological records I, that didn't explain X, Y, Z, however the Bible did, I found that the Bible makes more sense in this way. And if you want to talk about it more, we'll be happy to jump on a call. Or if we're talking about it more on Sunday, you can watch, you can watch something here. Or we talked about this last week. If you want to go deeper, there's a video for you. And again, this comment, these replies are not so much for the person that's hating. It's for everybody else that is seeing the hateful comment, 
they're going to see your reply and see how you handle that situation. So when they have an objection, speak truth to it. Church is just out for your money. Hey, I agree with you, man. There is a lot of churches out there that aren't doing what they should be doing. We believe that we are on the right track to share the gospel, despite however much money we have or don't have. In fact, if our church closes its doors, we're just going to do church in our home. I don't know if I'd say that, but that's just something like, hey, I hear you. There's a lot of people taking advantage of others out there in the name of God. What we believe is that you were created for something new. We believe that you were created for something bigger. And the forces that are holding you down can't hold you down forever. There's some messaging that you need to do in there. And it needs to come down to your, come back to your core message, which we help you with. But speak truth to it. Then there's the complaint. <clears throat> this is when you do a Bible verse and someone says, you know, I used to go to your church, but with the new pastor, I just couldn't, couldn't really feel like I was being fed. Now I don't go to church anymore. Or um, your people are so unwelcoming. I went to church and no one shook my hand. Or um, I sent you an email. How come you haven't responded to it? Trying to hide something, right? Complaints are disagreements with who you are. <clears throat> to handle a complaint, again, publicly, comment back, speaking truth to anything that's wrong, and then offer to invite them to a one-on-one -on -one conversation while also reaching out to them in a one-on-one -on -one capacity. A lot of, a lot of people in, in my space will say, well, hide it and reach out to them one-on-one. -on -one. I think that's good. I think we need to be great. And again, use that as an opportunity to show the error of their ways and speak truth to it in a way that everyone can see, okay? If my buddy tells me, hey, you know, um, I, I'm, I'm, uh, your church is fine, but man, the, P, the pastor's boring, right? I wouldn't say, shh, hey, let's talk about that at home. Bro, that, that makes me look culpable. <laughs> That's like, I agree with you, no. Be like, hey, I hear you. Sometimes it can be a snore. That'll get people's attention. The truth of it is, right, if someone were to say, hey, this pastor's so boring. Hey, thanks for checking us out. And thanks for the feedback. Pastor Tim here. I agree. I am too boring sometimes. Do me a favor and let's talk about, let's talk about maybe what's missing or don't give up the search. There's a pastor out there that preaches in a way that's going to speak to you. God bless. And then you can reach out one-to-one. -one. Hey, appreciate your comment. You could have just left it and gone about your day, but you let us know and we're going to do something with it. How can we pray for you? I don't know, something like that. <clears throat> if there is a complaint, move it into a one-on-one -on -one conversation, but use that opportunity to, dis to show the world or show your community that you're going to do something about it. Again, if you do nothing, people are like, man, that must be true, or they don't care. And if you just hide it, well, you lose that opportunity to show that you care. So complaints are, so objections, you need to speak truth to it. And, and this, is a, this is a platform. Someone is opening, someone is placing down a soapbox for you to preach the gospel. Don't kick it under and say, we're not going to talk about that. This is not the time or place. Dude, step on the soapbox. Start preaching in a way that's understandable. And then if they do a complaint, acknowledge the complaint, and then, offer, and then offer and do take the initiative to move that conversation one-on-one. -on -one. What you'll find is that about four out of five of those never go anywhere because it's a complaint. They're just in a negative, hissy fit mood, and your Facebook post or your Instagram post or your YouTube video just happen to show up on their feed or your ad. But if I say, hey, you know what? You could have just passed, you could have just scrolled this, but instead you spoke something here. That means something to us. Can we talk about that more and, and see if we can find a solution here? See if we can make this right? That's my favorite phrase to use when they say something like, I went to this church, they just wanted my money. Hey, I'd love to know more about your first visit because that is not the intention. That is not our heart. And I want to do everything I can to make this right and make sure that whatever your experience was, no one else experiences that. We want to make this right. Check your messages. That shows me that your church cares. It's not, no, uh, you're wrong. 
it's whoa. That's not our intention. What did we do wrong? Let's, let's work on this. Let's fix this. We want to we want to improve. We want to be better. Our message is that important. And then there's the trolls. The trolls are easy. Hide and block. Now, if you have if you have uh, if you're looking at something like, well, this could be an objection, but it could also be a troll like Jesus was an R word ist. Like, is this guy just trying to troll me and cause chaos or does he actually think that usually you can click on their profile and you can see whether or not this is like a real person, right? You can see their comment history, what they're posting. And if they're just posting a lot of militant atheist stuff, it's probably a troll. And they have very little interest in having a dialogue. Hide and block. Or actually, I just like to hide. If it becomes a problem, then you block. But if you check their profile and you're like, hey, this is someone that lives in our town. They go to this school. Their kid goes to the school. I can see it on their Facebook profile or Instagram profile because people don't know how to keep their family lives not public. Anyways, it, this is like, this is an actual neighbor. Then I would respond to it as an objection. I've never heard that before, but people will say it, try to cause them. And then if, and then if they continue trolling, like, oh, sounds like someone's an R word too. Okay, well, hide and block. <laughs> they obviously don't have any interest in being, having a conversation. That's the, that's the ways to handle hateful comments. And, and when you start looking at comments like this, you'll start to realize they're not actually hateful. They might be hateful upon first sight or first hearing of it. But once you sit down, you're like, is this person actually objecting to something we believe or something we do? Are they actually complaining because they had a negative experience with us or maybe a mismatched experience of expectations? Or are they just trying to troll? Once you start looking at that, you realize that most of these hateful comments are not actually hateful comments. They're just negative. Yes, disrespectful. Yes, worded improperly. But it's something that is an opportunity for you to speak truth and share the gospel, not only with them, but for everyone else that is seeing this. This is one of the things I love about Facebook ads. My church ran a Facebook ad, and my church is unique. I know, ironically, for a guy that works with churches, my church is unlike any other church I've ever seen or worked with. We don't have a building. We meet in homes. We have a pastor. We have a leadership team. I'm church communications director. Uh, sorry, just communications director. And we equip these home groups across the country to disciple their friends and family by bringing them into the home and essentially having a group, uh, a church gathering in their home that's taught, led, by our pastor, but facilitated by the people. It, it, we are training them up to be disciples that can then birth into new groups and new disciples. So we run Facebook ads saying, hey, if you, can't, if you don't have a church home or if you can't find a church home or if your church stopped meeting for whatever reason or if you moved, we'd love to have you look at having your home become a, 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 a hotspot, which we call, which is a host home for our church. It's very like we got a video that goes with it that cites the Bible references. It's animated. It's engaging. It's a great video. The copy is very simple, you know, um, and people come in and are like, church groups are not biblical. How dare you? Um, how dare you talk down to the church? We never talked anything about the local church. We just talked about our church. But people think that we're dissing the local church, which we don't. We love the church. But one thing that happened during the, uh, the pandemic was we were running an ad. Hey, is your church not meeting? Feel free to have a, a small gathering at your house and do this until your church opens up and watch our services and facilitate discipleship. You know, maybe you'll learn something. And someone said, oh, this is disgusting. You're spreading the plague. <laughs> You're spreading the virus. Pastor Tim comes in and says, hey, we understand the concern and we don't ask anyone to do what they're not comfortable with. If you're at a point where you're very concerned for your health, we invite you just to watch our services by yourself or with your close loved ones that are in the same household. However, if you've, if you've been inoculated, if you are wearing PPE or whatever protection, or you just feel like you're okay to meet in homes with social distancing, we invite you to it. There's no right or wrong way to do this. It's only a matter of doing something. And someone said, thank you for your thought into this. I had no idea this is how you felt. So now when people see that Facebook ad, which I don't think we run anymore, 
when people see that saw that Facebook ad, they saw that comment, how dare you spread the virus? And they see our loving response speaking truth to it. They're like, hey, this church has their head on a, on a swivel. They actually know what they're doing. Respect. Let me see what this is about. We had another comment, right? Meeting in churches, meeting at homes is, is not in the Bible. It's anti-biblical. To which pastor responded, actually, the first churches met in homes. And he, he posted like a wall of 24 verses, which I don't recommend, but he was excited. Uh, look at all these first church homes, uh, first churches that met in homes. And they came back and was like, wow, I guess I got to do more reading. Now, f- those are two examples of like 10 hateful comments. Um, but those two responses people see and say, hey, this church actually has something going on. So if you don't have haters, you're not promoting enough. Again, people will hate you because they hate Jesus. And if they don't hate you, they either don't know you or, God forbid, you're just promoting yourself like a charity with a church name. And Jesus isn't, the gospel isn't present enough. When you do a good job of promoting your church and being active and raising awareness of who you are, people will hate you. That's a good thing. And if you don't have haters, you're not promoting enough. To which I say, down below this uh, video or podcast, wherever you're listening, there is a link to a free checklist where we're going to show you the 10 most important things you can do to become better known in your community. Download the checklist and just take an audit of what you're doing and have some kind of guidelines of what you need to do next to become better aware. And now you know how to deal with the hateful comments. So that is a non-issue now. You can promote your church and whenever a negative comment comes up, Is it an objection? Speak truth to it. Is it a complaint? Address it, acknowledge it, move it to a one-on-one conversation to make it right. And is it a troll? Hide it. If it's an issue, block it.